Okay, well, I wanted to go through a few more examples of this um, method. The basic, there are basically three, three situations. One is you're given one of the zeros and you can find the other two zeros of a third order polynomial. Um, the other one is you have to guess what one of the roots is. And then once you guess the right one, then you can find the other two roots. And the third case is where you have possibly two complex roots. So sometimes there you're given one of the complex roots and you can find the other complex root, or you can find the real root and then given the real root, you can end up with the quadratic um, equation. So I'm going to try to give you some more examples of that. So the first example I'm going to give you is where we have a third order polynomial. And we're going to use the idea of rational zeros to come up with some possibilities. And then we're going to guess, see what happens. Okay, so here's a third order polynomial. So the possible rational zeros are going to be equal to, based on P and Q. So P are the factors of 14, which are going to be 1, 2, 7, and 14. And then we can have plus or minus either one of those. Okay, Q is 1, plus or minus 1. So if we look at P over Q, possible rational zeros are going to be plus or minus 1 divided by 1. So when you have just x cubed in this case with the 1 coefficient, it's just the fact plus or minus the factors of the co constant. So we get plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, plus or minus 14. So we have eight possibilities. And because it's the third order polynomial, it can either be one real zero or three real zeros. So we got to make a guess. So we said one is a good guess. We use synthetic division. Try it one, see if we get a remainder of zero. Okay, remember one. One times one is one. Negative eight plus one is negative seven. One times negative seven is negative seven. Five plus negative seven is negative two. One times negative two is negative two, and we get ten. So. What we can say is that x equals 1 is not a 0. We can also say that f of 1 equals 10. Now, another thing is that we know that f of 0 is 14, because if I, that's the y-intercept. So if I set x equal to 0 here, I will get 14. So let's just kind of plot that out. So we got, um, so f of 0 is 10, I mean 14, and f of 1 is 10. Also, because we have a positive leading coefficient of x cubed, we know that it's going to come from this direction. It's going to go in that direction. So we could have this thing loop down and intersect somewhere here. We could have it loop down like that, or we could have it loop down something like that. So let's, um, we could either try positive 2, or we could try negative 1, either one of those. It looks like, it doesn't seem like um, negative 1 would work. Let's try it. That's always an easy one. 
So what we'll do is we'll try x equals negative 1. So we bring down 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 8 plus negative 1 is negative 9. Negative 9. Negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9. We add those together, we get 14. Negative 1 times 14 is negative 14. And we get 0. So lo and behold, that actually does work. So we can say x equals negative 1 is a 0. And what we have left are these three terms, which would give us x squared minus 9x plus 14. And we set that equal to zero to find the other two factors. And first, we just see if we can do it by observation. So the question is, what two numbers multiplied together equal 14? We already know that. 2 and 7, 1 and 14. 2 and 7 added together are 9, so that looks like, looks like the right choice. 2 and 7. This is positive, this is negative, so we have both negatives. So you get x equals 7 and x equals 2. So we have all three zeros, x equals negative 1, x equals positive 2, x equals 7. Now, if we had chosen 2, we would have found that that also was a 0. So when we said, I, could, I said we could choose 2 or we could choose negative 1, it turned out both of those would have worked. Let's just quickly do that. So if we had chosen 2 instead of negative 1, is our next guess. Bring down the 1, 2 times 1 is 2, negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, 5 plus negative 12 is negative 7, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, you get 0. And what you'd have left is this equation, which then could factor to this and we would get x equals 7 and x equals negative 1, which is exactly what we get over here. So either one of those would have turned out to be okay. As far as the solution is concerned. And so if we wanted to plot this function, we have at our disposal right now is the zeros and the, any extra points. Now because we didn't, since we guessed the right ones, we don't have any extra points that we can use. But no, we did use, we did have one, right? One didn't work. It gave us a value of 10, so we do have that value. Um, so let's, let's actually make the y-axis go from negative 20 to positive 20. And the x-axis from negative 10 to positive 10. So let's plot our zeros first. Our zeros are going to be 7, positive 2, negative 1. Our y-intercept was 14. So that would be here. Here's 10, 12, 14 f of 1 was equal to 10. So that's there. So this was this loop up here. It'll come back down through there like that. This one's going to go down. So the only thing we don't have is a number between 2 and 7. And you could pick halfway in between evaluate the function I'm going to pick either I'm not going to go quite halfway between I'm going to take this function here and copy it bring it over here so I can see it and so I'm going to evaluate yeah let's do one two three four five f of five Instead of doing f of four and a half. 
So we have 5 cubed minus 8 x squared. We, we might find that this is uh, off the scale of our graph. I bet it is, as I think about it, because this space, larger spacing here, gives it more chance to dip down. But we'll find out. Okay, so we got 5 cubed minus 8 times 5 squared plus 5 squared plus 14. And we get negative 36. So that would be off scale. So we know that this thing is going to come down and go back up like that. It's going to have to go. So I'd have to, I'd have to adjust my scale to go from 0 to 40 instead of from 0 to 20. But I'm not going to redo that. So that's what you would do is you would have to adjust your scale once you found that extra point. And so we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six points. Three of them would be zeros. One of them would be the y-intercept. One of them was because of the fact that uh, I guessed one and it wasn't correct. And then I had to pick a final point. Okay, the next type of problem is where you're given a polynomial in one root and you have to find the other two roots, which are zeros. So let's work through that example. So that's my function. Okay, so let's say I say one of the roots is x equals um, 4. What are the other two? Now, they could be complex, or they could be um, real. We all know that. We, don't, we know that we have one real root that's given. So what we would do is use synthetic division. x equals 4. And we should get a 0. If I tell you it's 0, then it doesn't work. Then I've made a mistake. So you bring down the 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. Gives you 0. So it is. It is a 0. And then you take the three coefficients and rewrite it as the quadratic equation. And in this case, you can use factoring again by observation. So what two numbers multiplied together give you 6, whose difference is 1, would be 3 and 2. And because this is negative, you have to put the negative in the larger of the two. So what that says is that You've got four zeros, the one given, and then the two associated with the here. So you've got x equals, the factor is x minus 3, the zero is x equals 3. The factor is x, min, x plus 2, the, the zero is x equals negative 2. We also know that the y-intercept is 24. Let's write that down too. So the y-intercept is 0, 24. So that, that helps us a little bit in terms of drawing the scale to the graph. We may have to choose an additional point or two to draw a good graph. Okay, so let's go to 40 here, minus 40, negative 10, positive 10. So my x-intercepts are 4, 3, negative 2, and my y-intercept is 24. So this would be 20. Um, so Half of 40 is 20. 
and there are five marks here. So 20 divided by five is four. So these have increments of four units. So this one will be 24. 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. And because this is almost in between these two, you'd expect that this would go maybe a little bit, but not too much. This one's going to come down because these two zeros are very close to each other. You probably aren't going to, to loop down too far. So if I were to do two extra points, I might choose halfway between these two, which is um, three and a half. So I could evaluate the function at three and a half, which would give me that point. I'm not going to do it, but I'm just going to, that's what you could do. And I might pick, um, you know, f of one to try to get where that location is a little, a little better. You could pick, uh, you know, f of negative three, so you could figure out where that point is. And you could do f of one, two, three, four, five, and get that point as well, if you wanted to get a better curve. Uh, you're not going to have enough time to do that on a test. What you're going to have to do is basically calculate the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, know the end behavior, and draw a reasonable curve. You may have to decide what the y-axis is set at to at least get the points associated with the y-intercept in there. Okay, so that's the second kind of problem. So the first one was you didn't have any idea what the roots are. So you had to just use the rational root test to come up with the possibilities. Then try a number and see if you get a zero for the remainder. If you do, then you've you got lucky. And then you can find the other two roots by factoring. The second case is where you're given a through third order polynomial and you're told one of the zeros, that one of the real zeros. Okay, the next type of problem is where you're given the function and you're given one of the real zeros. I mean, pardon me, one of the complex zeros. Now, uh, let me just write this down, but I'll talk about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say one of the zeros is negative 3i. So given third of the polynomial, given one of the complex zeros, and what you need to do is find the other comp complex zero, which is always the co complex conjugate. Now, the problems in the test, it's either ju it's just going to be an imaginary number. I could give you a more, I could give you a complex number with a real and an imaginary part, but multiplying those together uh, gets pretty complicated and easy to make a mistake. So if, if you have one of these on the test, it'll just be an imaginary number with just the imaginary part. So you'll be given plus or minus some number i. So to find the third root or the third zero, you take the two complex zeros and you convert them into factors. So remember, which, to get the factors, you solve for zero, basically. So the corresponding factor associated with this zero is we would add 3i to both sides. And so we get 3i is equal x plus 3i equals zero. That's the factor, that's the zero. Likewise, if you move this to the other side, you'll, if you move this to the other side, all you got left on the right-hand side is zero, so you'll get x minus 3i. So the zero is x equals plus 3i, factor is x minus 3i. So then you put those factors together like a quadratic or two linear factors kind of, but they're not linear, they're 
your imaginary, and then you multiply it. Now, because you chose complex conjugates, the inner and outer cancel out, so you don't have to write that down. And then you have negative 3 times positive 3, so that's negative 9. And you have i times i, which is i squared. i squared is negative 1, so negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9. So anytime you have, start with a complex 0, and you multiply by its complex conjugate, you're going to have a positive number here. Because if it was, if it was negative, you, could, you would have two real zeros. If it was x squared minus 9, you'd have x plus 3 and x minus 3. So this has to be positive when you go through this process. So one, then, once you have this complex, not this complex, this quadratic that doesn't have any real roots, just has these complex roots, you use long division to figure out what the final linear factor is. Now you could just guess by using the rational zero thing, but this one you don't have to guess. So you take this quadratic expression and you divide that into your original function. Okay, so what do I need to multiply x squared by to get x cubed? The answer is x. x times x squared is x cubed. x times 9 is 9x. You subtract both of those terms from the original expression. They go to 0. So you're left with negative 5x squared minus 45. So then you say, okay, now what do I need to multiply it by? x squared by to get negative 5x squared, negative 5. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times 9 is negative 45. We're going to subtract that, and you can see they go to 0. So you're left with this as your final factor. So this original expression in its factored form looks like this. You take your factors, x plus 3i, x minus 3i, and x minus 5. So that's the factored version of your original third order equation. You also have the zeros, which are going to be x equals 5, not, not x equals negative 5. x minus 5 equals 0 will give you the zero. And then we were given the original zero of negative three i and we figured out the other complex zero by taking the complex conjugate. So if we plot this, we really only have two plots uh, points. We have the y intercept which is negative forty five and we have one x intercept. These two imaginary values do not result in any information that's usable for plotting the function. Okay, and the last thing, okay, the last one I'm going to do here is turn, it'll turn out that it'll be one that only has one real root, but it has three total roots, two of them being complex. I just want to show you how to do that. Now, I told you that, but you don't, you would not know that by looking at this equation. So the first thing you would do is you would look for the rational zeros. So P is plus or minus the factors of 45. So you've actually got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus, um, what would it be? 5 plus or minus 9 plus or minus 15 plus or minus 45. 1 times 45 is 45. 3 times 15 is 45. 5 times 9 is 45. So, and then Q is plus or minus 1. So, the possible rational zeros are all of these P because we're dividing them all by 1. 
So there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six times two, 12 possibilities. We do know that f of zero is 45. That's the y-intercept by setting these equal to zero. So let's try one. Let's try seeing if x equals one is a factor. Bring one down, one times one is one. Negative three plus one is negative two. One times negative two is negative two. Negative three, negative two, it's negative five. Add it together. 45 plus negative 5 is 40. So we know f of 1 is 40. Okay, so that's going in the right direction. Let's just plot what we know. So we know f of 0 is 45. We know f of 1 is 40. So we're going in the right direction here. Now, again, because it's a plus, this thing has to... Has to uh, has to come down this way. I mean, it starts down in the lower left hand corner. So this thing will either go down like that, or it will just go up like that. We don't know yet. So because we we do know that we have a zero to the left of the um, origin might be the way to choose it, because if we go over here and just start picking numbers, we may not get any idea of what's going on. Um, so what's the first negative? Zero, that's a possibility. Negative one. It's probably unlikely, because this one is, one to the right is 40. One to the left is probably not going to be negative. So we could, we could try negative one, but I don't think it's going to work. Won't take too long to do. You know, this is not a hard thing to do. It's actually pretty easy to evaluate functions using synthetic division. We'll bring that down. One times one is a negative one. Add these two together, you get negative four. Multiply those together, you get positive four. Um, add those two together, you get positive one. Negative one times negative. Positive one is negative one, 44. Okay, so that actually goes. Um, it does go down just a little bit, but not very much. So the next possible, um, and so what we know is f of negative one equals 44. That didn't give us a whole lot of new information. Let's go to the next negative zero. We tried negative one, the next one will be negative three. Bring the one down. Negative three times one is negative three. Add together, you get negative six. Negative three times negative six is 18. 18 minus three is 15. Negative three times 15 is negative 45. Bingo. So we have a zero at x equals negative three. And we have a resulting quadratic equation. The first thing you do is you think, okay, is there anything that I can factor this? Now, you know, uh, the factors of 15 are 1 and 5, 15, 3 and 5. So let's say there were 3 and 5. Negative 3 times negative 5 would be negative, positive 15, but negative 3 plus negative five is negative eight. That doesn't work. And it's going to even be even worse from my other guess. So it, I don't see any way of factoring that and getting an answer. So even if it was real zeros, you could still use completing the square. And that's what we're going to use. So let's move this to the other side, make it negative. 
Because what we're doing is here is we're going to solve for x and find out what values of x cause us to go to zero. What are there are they real numbers or are they imaginary numbers? Okay, so you take this coefficient, negative six divided by two, square it. Negative six squared is positive nine. So we add nine. We should add nine over here to balance it out. Now make the stuff on the right hand side be a complete square x minus 3 squared is equal to negative 6 well that's where we know we don't have real roots because to solve for x we're going to have to take the square root of the both sides you can't take the square root of negative 6 with real numbers but we can with imaginary numbers so we're going to take the square root of both sides so that's going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 6 just plus or minus the square root of 6i, and then add 3 to both sides, and there you go. So we have the zeros, rx equals negative 3, x equals 3 plus the square root of 6i, and x equals 3 minus the square root of 6i. So those are the zeros. If I plug in negative 3 into this original equation, where it is, I'll get 0. If I plug 3 plus the square root of 6i into the original equation, I'll get 0. And if I plug 3 minus the square root of 6i into the original equation, I'll get 0. You may not believe that, and it's pretty complicated to do it. So I'm not going to do it, but it does work if you real careful about everything. Now the factors are, well the factor associated with x equals negative 3 is x plus 3. The factor associated with x equals 3 plus the square root of 6 i is x minus the quantity 3 plus the square root of 6 i. I'm going to move this over to the run out of space. And then you have x minus 3 minus the square root of 6i. And that is equal to, if you multiply all this out, is equal to this original equation. Now, um, actually, what I'm going to do here is uh, there are no more questions, okay? So you guys who are don't, not interested in the rest of this, you can just skip it and you, you'll have finished all the quiz questions. But if you're interested, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how these complex numbers are do cause the original equation to go to zero. So stick with me if you're a math person. So I'm just going to copy this over here. Okay, so there's the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do f of 3 plus the square root of 6i. Wow, this, yeah, this is going to be exciting. 3 plus the square root of 6i cubed minus 3 times 3 plus the square root of 6i squared minus 3 times 3 plus the square root of 6i plus 45. Okay, so that's going to have to equal zero. So what are the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, since I have to square it here, I'll do that first and then I'll multiply it out to get that first term. So I'll need this thing squared anyway. So 
So 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 6i times 3 is plus 3 square root of 6i. And then you get another one, plus 3 square root of 6i. And then the, the last is going to be plus 6, because you got square root of 6 times the square root of 6, i squared. So these two combine, and this one, this is going to end up being negative 6, because you're going to have i squared, which is negative 1. So 9 plus negative 6 is 3. So I get 3 plus 2 of these. So instead of 6, 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. So I'll have plus 6 square root of 6 i. Okay, so that is this term. my head or just the, thinking about it but I am going to pers persevere okay now what we're going to do is we're going to take 3 plus 6 square root of 6 i and we're going to multiply it by 3 plus square root of 6 i again to find out what this thing is so 3 times 3 is 9 outer is 3 times the square root of 6i, which is 3 square root of 6i. And we have 18, 3 times eight, 6 is 18, square root of 6i. And then okay, so then we multiply these out here. You have 6 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 6, which is going to be 6. And you have i times i, which is i squared. So ultimately we have 9 plus 3 plus 18 is 21, 21 square root of 6i. This is going to be 36 with a negative sign, so it's going to be minus 36. And then you'll get negative 27, I guess. 36 minus 9 is 27. Minus 27 plus 21 square root of 6i. Okay, so let's go over here and plug everything in. So you get negative 27 plus 21 square root of 6i uh, minus minus 3 times this, which we said was 3 plus 6 square root of 6i plus this, which is negative 3 times 3 plus the square root of 6i plus 45. Okay, let's multiply all these things out that we haven't already done. So the first one we've already done, the second one we've already done. Here we have negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. Negative 3 times 6, which is negative 18, square root of 6i. Here we have negative 9, and then we have negative 3, square root of 6i, plus 45. So if we put all the, the real stuff together, we got 27 minus 9, minus 9, plus 45, should equal 0, which it does, okay, so it all goes to 0, and then the imaginary part, we've got plus 21 square root of 6i, minus 18 square root of 6i, minus 3 square root of 6i, which equals 0i, which is 0. So if you stuck around to the end, you got you saw that it actually does work. So that's pretty cool. And if you didn't follow it all, you can rewind it and do it because I can't do it again.